real-life account of a high-powered legal mind that had to deal with her life changing. Her memoir is inspirational to say the least and shares insights that working moms will find a voice in as they navigate motherhood, life and everything else. Nikki Mel Herbert joins us from our Cape Town studio. Nikki, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks very much for having me on your show. For the benefit of our viewers, can you give us just a brief synopsis of your memoir? Uh, it essentially deals with um, my own true story of trying to find myself and my sort of station in life, really. Um, having been brought up in a, in a sort of a legal career with a strong legal background and then finding myself with four children, I suddenly had to reevaluate my life and my priorities, really. So mm. it's um, a very true, honest account of how you deal with that motherhood juggle, really. Um, it's quite humorous. When you talk about the tooth fairy, you talk about how people react to when they find out you have four children. But I can only imagine it's anything but humorous. Or it was at that stage. Um, I, I suppose that there, there are two themes that run through the book, if I, have to, if I think about it. There are obviously, there's a very light-hearted um, aspect to it. Um, and yet there, there's some very deep-seated issues about it as well. So... It was a really a combination of both, but it, ultimately it's, it's a true story and um, it's a way in which I dealt with it was, was to sort of bring the humour into it and um, that's really how it developed, I suppose. You're, you're a highly educated woman, you're writing legal thesis, you're looking through documents, then motherhood jumps on you. Talk to me about what Nikki was like before she became a mom, a, 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 a very active mom to four children. What was your perception of motherhood before it actually happened to you? Uh, oh, difficult question. I, I think it's something that each mother will go through uh, in a different way. And I don't suppose you really foresee what your life is going to turn out to be ultimately. Um, you sort of j jump into motherhood um, not really knowing what to expect and, and, and each mother's got to sort of cope with, with, with the aspect of motherhood in, in, in her own individual way. Um, so one doesn't really foresee how it's, going to, how it's going to happen. And I think for me that was the, that was the sort of inner conflict is now having had four children, how, how does one deal with, with both of them? And, and uh, I suppose each one's got to, yeah, you've got to work it out for yourself. Mm. There's a rhythm, there's a stride that you eventually hit as a mom. And it's quite evident at the beginning that, you know, it's such a big surprise for you. And then there's four and then there's, and there's all of these things. And every little one is so different and takes up a different energy. Talk to me about eventually finding that rhythm and getting back to, you know, using that legal mind and everything else. How, how, was it easy or was it difficult at the beginning to get back into a rhythm? Um... I don't, think I, I don't think I really, I think the idea was not to, not to stop completely. I think the idea for, for, for mums is to try and find that balance somehow and to have some flexibility. I think that's the, the ultimate uh, thing that, that mums want to find is, is the flexibility um, to be able to combine both properly. You know, there's, this, there's a huge, um, not a hostility as such, but there's a, there's, a, there's a big battle between the working mums and the non-working mums. And I think that... One, I think the idea is that sometimes if one does get off the treadmill, so to speak, you know, completely, it's very difficult to get back on. And so I was quite determined to just keep going in some capacity. And because motherhood doesn't really allow you to uh, deal with your life in a, in, a, in a sort of a full career, one's got to make adjustments. And I think that's, that's the tricky part. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to say that... Question? I'm going to say, Nikki, that, you know, I'm going to encourage both, cup, both couples, both men and women, to read the book because it does give you a little bit of an insight from a man's perspective just how much a woman who's had a professional career not only gives up, but the kind of juggling process that men might not undergo. That's fantastic. I, I, it's, it's, it's a strange, it's a strange um, thought that actually, you know, men might be reading this book because it was, it's really a very personal story. So... I'm encouraged, and, and, and obviously the more people hear about it, the more men are inclined to want to read it because women sort of say that they, they should. So I do feel that although it wasn't really written for men, um, and it's, it's definitely a, a woman's type of book, 
because it's so it's so personal, uh, you know, just about career, uh, you know, and motherhood in general. But I think that men men would probably benefit from from reading it just to understand what the woman really does go through because it is it, it is a fairly a fairly common theme, and um, you know, I think most mothers who, who who do want to have some sort of career will will identify with it quite quite strongly. Nikki, we're going to leave it there, but thank you very much for joining us from our Cape Town studio. That was uh, mother, lawyer, and author Nikki Malherbo with her memoir.